I don't want to live in a country where no one ever says anything that offends anyone. That's why we have Canada. <laughs> but that's not us. That's not us, because you know what you get when you place a premium on never offending anyone and only saying what's safe? You get this guy. <laughs> the least interesting man in the world. <laughs> a man who never takes a position on anything that he cannot reverse in the second half of the same sentence. <laughs> like last week when he said, we may make mistakes as a nation, and we'll say we're sorry for that. But apologizing for America is something I will never do. <laughs> That's right. Mitt refuses to apologize, and he's very sorry about it. <laughs> the MittBot 3000 has been programmed to take both sides of every issue everywhere. For example, his position on pulling out of Afghanistan, he's for it, and also against it. He's strongly for against it. <laughs> this is the Frankenstein we have created. Mitt Romney, the least interesting man in the world. <laughs> he once said corporations were people because compared to him, they are. <laughs> when Ambien can't sleep, it takes him. He once masturbated thinking about the great everyday values at Sears. <laughs> paint, paint watches him dry. <laughs> he doesn't always drink beer, but when he does, no wait, he never does. Because he is the least interesting man in the world. Stay boring, my friends. <laughs> All right, new rule. Stop saying anybody or anything is like the Nazis, okay? Republicans aren't like the Nazis. Even neo-Nazis aren't like the Nazis. <laughs> Nothing is like the Nazis, except for Walmart. That's... <laughs> new rule. You can't complain about athletes doping when your Olympic torch looks like a giant joint on a giant roach clip. Let the games begin. New rule. News organizations have to stop using the phrase, we go beyond the headlines. That's your job, dummy. You don't see American Airlines saying, we land our jets on the runway. New rule. Call things what they are. If your morning coffee contains crushed ice, whipped cream, and caramel, it's a milkshake. <laughs> Same as if you cook your cocaine on a spoon and smoke it, you're not freebasing, you're a crackhead. And if you go down on your husband after he gives you a new fur coat, you're not celebrating your anniversary, you're a, oh, never mind. <laughs> rule. Skip the truck. <laughs> President Bush is down on the ranch, and we all know what that means. Lots of pictures of him in that pickup truck, as if he's going into town to pick up a bale of hay. <laughs> okay, we get it. You're a rancher. You're clearing brush. You're a Washington outsider. You're a huge country fan. Unfortunately, that country is Saudi Arabia. <laughs> companies must stop with the advertisements implying they're friends of the environment. <laughs> At ExxonMobil, we care about a thriving wildlife. Please, the only thing an oil executive has in common with a seagull is that they would both steal french fries from a baby. <laughs> rule, if Mitt Romney wants respect for the Mormon religion, he has to start wearing a funny hat. <laughs> Orthodox Jews, crazy, but they wear funny hats, so you can't diss them. Sikhs, I'm not even sure they're a religion, but I know better than to mess with the hat. The Pope, what does that hat even mean? I'm infallible? 
I'm a sailboat. <laughs> oh my God. I know it would look weird if Mitt Romney suddenly started wearing a fuchsia pink fire helmet, but <laughs> what the hell, he's changed everything else. Beginning with knocking down the contention that Democrats are envious of success and sneer at the American dream of starting out with nothing and making good. No, it's not that liberals envy the rich. They just wish the rich would admit that a lot of them were just lucky. This is Paul Ryan's boyhood home. This is Mitt Romney's boyhood home. This is Obama's boyhood home. One room, one window. Going from that house to the White House, that's starting from nothing and making good. Rule. Get the Ashton Kutcher to me more breakup over now. Why wait until it happens? I already don't give a shit. Let's just pretend. Let's just pretend we've already printed those issues of Us Weekly and people read them and thrown them away. And while we're at it, let's also pretend we've already heard Joe Lieberman drop out. New rule. Prince Harry is going to hurt someone. <laughs> Look at this kid. He's a thundering ball of rage. His mom's dead. His father dates rotted tree bark. His brother gets to be king, and he's destined to spend the rest of his life being photographed doing nothing. New rule, stop whining about gas prices. It's good that it costs a lot, and not just because the sales tax will help pay for our twice a year governor elections. It's also good if it makes you think of walking the three blocks from your house to Del Taco instead of taking the Land Cruiser. Gasoline costs a lot because we have to find it, bribe or kill the people who live on top of it, <laughs> extract it, refine it, ship it, and pump it. You'll pay $2 a gallon and you'll like it because you know what the alternative is, riding on the bus with poor people. <laughs> New rule, no, we don't need a Hummer cologne. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Hummer is now also a men's fragrance. They say the they say the scent is a masculine combination of leather, sandalwood, and a bald man's tiny cock. <laughs> By the way, it's also a great cologne for gay guys. You put it on and before you know it, you're rolling over. <laughs> Rule. Spiritual messages spray painted on plywood don't stop hurricanes. <laughs> Hurricanes can't read. This one says, Jesus walks, walks, walks with us. No, he doesn't, doesn't, doesn't. You're living in a gymnasium. New rule. Stop giving me that pop-up ad for classmates.com. There's a reason you don't talk to people for 25 years. Because you don't particularly like them. <laughs> Besides, I already know what the captain of the football team is doing these days. Mowing my lawn. <laughs> New rule. You can only kill the number two man in Al-Qaeda once. <laughs> According to the White House, we've killed the number two man in Al-Qaeda about nine times now. He's not a terrorist. It turns out he's a zombie. We're fighting them over in Transylvania, so we don't have to fight them here. New rule. A hamburger is not the same thing as a car. The Bush administration wants to reclassify fast food jobs as manufacturing jobs. Talk about parsing the language. Bill Clinton may have finessed the definition of sex, but he never claimed his penis was actually a glass of lemonade. <laughs> A quarter pounder may spend a week in your colon, but that doesn't make it a durable good. <laughs> New rule, gay marriage won't lead to dog marriage. It is not a slippery slope to rampant interspecies coupling. When women got the right to vote, it didn't lead to hamsters voting. No court has extended the Equal Protection Clause to salmon. 
And for the record, all marriages are same-sex marriages. You get married, and every night, it's the same sex. <laughs> And finally, new rule in two parts. A, you can't call yourself a think tank if all your ideas are stupid. <laughs> and B, if you're someone from one of the think tanks that dreamed up the Iraq war and who predicted that we'd be greeted as liberators and that we wouldn't need a lot of troops and that Iraqi oil would pay for the war, that the WMDs would be found, that the looting wasn't problematic, that the mission was accomplished, that the insurgency was in its last throes, that things would get better after the people voted, after the government was formed, after we got Saddam, after we got his kids, after we got Sarkarwi, and that the whole bloody mess wouldn't turn into a civil war, you have to stop making predictions. <laughs> You know, there's a name for people who are always wrong about everything all the time. Husband. <laughs> you know, it's a shame what happened to think tanks. They used to produce valuable apolitical analysis, but partisanship crept into many of them. And the Bush administration doesn't just come up with something as stupid as, if we leave now, they'll follow us home. No, they have someone from a think tank say it first. It's a way to lend respectability. The same reason a titty bar has food. <laughs> the... <laughs> I hear. The... the think tanks that incubated the Iraq war have lofty names like the Heritage Foundation, and the project for a new American century, whatever. <laughs> They've been wrong so often, I'm surprised they're not my broker. <laughs> Richard Pearl thought we could win Iraq with 40,000 troops. Paul Wolfowitz predicted in 2003 that within a year, the grateful people of Baghdad would name some grand square in their fine city after President Bush. And he was right when he said they'd be waving American flags. They were on fire. <laughs> William Crystal poo-pooed the fears that Sunnis and Shiites would be at each other's throats as the stuff of pop psychology. Right, and having your head chopped off is just a quick way to drop 11 pounds. <laughs> Crystal, of course, is revered by much of the right because he was Dan Quayle's chief of staff and was known as Quayle's brain. <laughs> You know that. Which sounded impressive until I remembered Dan Quayle didn't have a brain. <laughs> and now Mr. Crystal proposes immediate military action against Iran, predicting the Iranians will thank us for it. <laughs> hey, you know what, Nostradamus? Why don't you sit this one out? <laughs> We'll get by using the magic eight ball for a while. Because you guys have been so wrong about so much for so long, people are actually turning to the Democrats. <laughs> so we can say Iraq was a noble experiment, if that helps you. Our intention was good, to penetrate Iraq and bring it to a glorious euphoric climax. But it's clear now that's just not going to happen. And yet, we're still pounding away. <laughs> causing the whole area to become painfully inflamed. <laughs> and in that situation, the kindest thing you can do is just pull out. <laughs> new rule. The news networks must update their stock footage. Are you ready for the evening news, everybody? Hussein shooting off his rifle. <laughs> Osama with his finger up. Money being printed. That machine that sorts cigarettes. <laughs> Terrorists on the monkey bars. Money being printed. Osama shooting his rifle. <laughs> the F-14 taking off. <laughs> Obese people in America. And monkey bars. I'm Dan Rather in New York. Good night. <laughs>